Okay. So you know, last in last class you have seen how after Sambaji's death, there was a meeting of Maratha noble and Esubai, that is Sambaji's wife at Raigarh, and uh, Rajaram who was uh, in prison, he was released and he was made uh, king of Maratha. Also. He was coronated, and then uh, as uh, you know, uh, Mar- Maharashtra, Raigarh, and all that area was attacked uh, by the Mughal. Uh, they decided that it is not safe for Rajaram to stay here. Esubai and Shivaji too, that is Sambaji's son, they stayed at uh, Raigad and uh, Rajaram, he escapes from Raigad, he goes to Pratapgad, then Pannada and then he goes all the way to Jenji, uh, that is uh, near Chennai. And uh, I have sent the link of Jenji Fort on our uh, Google Classroom. Uh, and anybody has seen that? No, right. oh, sir. Uh, well, uh, do do see that you know that, that gives information. I mean, I want you to enjoy history, not just you know read read for the sake of uh, uh, just passing the year. Yeah, may enjoy enjoy it so that you know understanding becomes more easier. It becomes more easy to recollect. So you know that that forts during medieval period, especially during this phase of Maratha war of independence, had played a very important role because at Jinji, uh, where Rajaram has to shelter. Uh, that was uh, later on surrounded by the Mughal and that siege uh, at Jinji, it continued for a very long period, eight years. Uh, the commander of Mughal commander was Zulfikar Khan and uh, the indicators point out that probably Zulfikar Khan had some understanding with Rajaram because siege cannot continue for such a long period and uh, he has deliberately not uh, tried his best uh, to, to take Jinji because later on we see that when Aurangzeb pressurizes him, uh, he, you know, he allows Rajaram to escape. He also allows the royal ladies, Rajaram's wives, to escape. And after that, he captures Jinji. Uh, so, probably there was certain understanding. And there are, there are certain situations when, when Zulfikar Khan's condition become very precarious, very bad. Because he was attacked by Marathas from outside, you know, Santajis and Dhanaji that we have referred in the last class. Uh, but Rajaram allows him to escape. And that, in fact, became one of the important points of disagreement between Rajaram and Santaji. The brave general of Marathas, but he was equally arrogant and vain, and uh, that is wha- what we were discussing. In the last, uh, I think I remember, you can just uh, remind me, in the, in the last uh, class we have ended with uh, re- reference to a letter that is written by Raja Ram to a Maratha noble, uh, in which uh, he plans out the different planning, like you know, the Maratha noble is asked uh, for a different conquest, and 6 uh, lakh hoon, that is uh, 25 lakh rupees will be paid to him in phases, he asked that you know you should conquer Hyderabad, Bhaganagar, and uh, other Mughal area, and you will be paid three lakh. And once you conquer Delhi, you will be paid three lakh. You know, Delhi was still far up. Marathas were fighting in their own land, but you you can you see the growing ambitions. Uh, and as we move from this uh, Rajaram spirit to Tarabai spirit after 1700 in, in our next topic, uh, you you will see that Marathas are increasingly having an upper hand o- over the Mughals. Well, uh, that, that is where we ended in the last class. This letter I have referred to. Do you, anybody remember? Yes. Yes, I told about the letter. Well, okay. You know, can you see PPT and me both? Yes, sir. Well, okay. So, you know, this, this is what uh, the later, uh, gist of the later was, you know, the letter was written by Hanumantra Ghorpade, who was in service of uh, Mughal, in service of Aurangzeb, and Rajaram uh, lures him back to for the Maratha cause and said that, you know, you must join hands together to fight for the protection of the Maratha Maharashtra Dharma, and you will be paid so much of money in, in pay this. We will go to the next now. So, you know, Rajaram, by his policy, Rajaram, uh, though, you know, uh, while analyzing his character last week, we will see that he was uh, not uh, an exceptionally brave person. He, 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 he never shines out in, in a war. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hello? Well, uh, n- n- neither is the diplomacy, but he was a person who was of having an amiable nature. You know, he, he was having a capacity to bring the people together and put them uh, to the best uh, possible use. So at uh, Jinji, he was supported by Palegars. I think by Palegars, I told you already, they, they were the vessels of uh, Vijayanagara Empire. And as Vijayanagara Empire was no more, these Palegars used to rule a kind of semi-independent status. They they use, they have, most of them have surrendered uh, to Adil Shah, even Shivaji's father, Shahaji. He fought against Palegars on behalf of Adil Shah. 
but they they were a kind of semi independent when the central authority of adilsha used to become weak they will assert their independence very quickly and uh, you know aurangzeb's attempt of converting some of the maratha noble to islam that also created anger you know many of the marathas who were in service of aurangzeb they started joining the rajarams and you know as as we see that situation of maratha was becoming better most of the people will have a tendency to joining the winning team so they they also started shifting from uh, their loyalty from mughal uh, to Uh, Rajaram, and now you know as as theater war of war uh, has uh, b- become very extensive now, uh, the extended from Maharashtra to all the way up to the uh, Jinji in in uh, Tamil Nadu presently. It was called Karnataka during those days. In Karnataka, Aurangzeb was was at a loss what to do because if he goes from one, uh, if he shifts his attention in towards south towards Karnataka, uh, the pressure on the Maratha in the in the Maharashtra it 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 gets weaker and the Marathas they will rise up they will spring up and start attacking the Mughal and if he stays in Maharashtra. Uh, like you know, we have seen in case of Zulfikar Khan, it becomes difficult to press on the fight against the Marathas. And Ram Chandra Pandey Amatya, he he took a very effective measure uh, to bring the Marathas together. Uh, you know, uh, the people who betrayed the Maratha cause, uh, they and joined the Mughal, they were prosecuted by the Marathas. They were prosecuted by Ram Chandra Pandey. Many of even you know, you know, he took very strict action. Even uh, anybody who betrayed the Maratha cause and joined the Mughal, even their wives and children were also arrested and put into the slavery. Like you know, Pishal Deshmukh. Uh, who was a person uh, who, in fact, you know, showed the way how to enter into Raigad to the Mughals, uh, and later on, you know, he converted to Islam, and he was easily, uh, richly rewarded by Aurangzeb. Mm, but he was surrounded by the Marathas, and uh, he was later on prosecuted by Ram Chandra Pandey Amatya. So, you know, he he made a made an example of him that anybody who is uh, leaving the cause of the Marathas and joining Mughals, mm, they will be dealt very severely. Now, uh, Esubai and Shivaji too, who was in the in the camp of the Mughal as uh, the royal prisoner, uh, Esubai also started uh, supplying certain information to the Marathas. You know, certain people Aurangzeb allowed that concession that certain people used to go to go and meet Esubai and Shivaji and then go back to Maratha again. So through her, through them, Esubai also started uh, giving certain information. Uh, uh, Aurangzeb had also, uh, uh, you know, sanctioned certain allowances for the maintenance of Esubai and uh, Shahu. Later on, he had a plan to use Shahu to create dissension among the Marathas. Uh, now, you know, the, the siege of Jinji was becoming, in fact, discomfortable for the Mughalites uh, themselves because you know, although Palegar and all those local population, they they were highly uh, in support of the Marathas. And the uh, Mughal were treated as as a kind of uh, forces of aggression, forces of uh, attacker, and uh, the atmosphere became quite hostile for Zulfikar Khan. And uh, at the same time, uh, these two Maratha generals, that is Sandaji and Dhanaji, uh, they also started harassing Zulfikar Khan. So, you know, they they will attack from outside on this army who, who were uh, besieging uh, the fort. And uh, the situation became became so disparate uh, that Zulfikar Khan, you know. Has to withdraw from the siege and uh, take shelter at one at one diwash place called one diwash. We will be uh, talking about how this event has happened. Well, uh, Ali Mardan Khan, who was a Mughal officer at Kanchi, were defeated by the Marathas, and uh, you know uh, this uh, Ali Mardan Khan he encountered Santaji. Santaji was going with his forces to attack Zulfikar Khan, the person who was besieging the the fort, and he was. Uh, Ali Mardan Khan tries to stop Santaji, but he was uh, defeated. Uh, and Ali Mardan Khan was defeated and taken as a prisoner. He was taken to Jinji by you know Santaji. Now, if Santaji and Dhanaji they can go to Jinji fort, meet Rajaram, and come back, what kind of siege it is? That is the reason I told you you must uh, take a look at the fort because you know that fort is is very massive, spread over a very extensive area, and it is very difficult to completely surround the fort. Uh, even even with a very huge army and cut off uh, the communication, uh, certain area, uh, certain hills, uh, there is a possibility that it will remain unoccupied, and from there uh, the people will go into the port and and may come out. So it you know it, it is having a huge wall. You know, in fact, you can have a better understanding of history when you geographically visit the places. Unfortunately, we cannot go now, and it's 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 far away. But uh, I wish I should take you to the certain ports if. Uh, The situation into at least nearby ports, Nagargan and all. Uh, well, okay. So you know during that stiff action, Ali Mardan Khan was defeated and he was taken to Jinji. 
and uh, Ali Mardan Khan was forced to pay a lot of money, a la- large amount of money in order to secure his release. Uh, now, uh, at the same time, Ismail Khan Maka, he was another Mughal commander uh, who tried to attack the Marathas, but he was defeated by, Zin- by Dhanaji, another Maratha general in January 1693, and he was also captured and taken to the uh, Jinji. Now, here what happened, as these two uh, Mughal nobles uh, who were assisting Zulbi Khan, I mean, uh, trying to prevent the Marathas from attacking Zulbi Khan, were themselves defeated by uh, the Marathas, they were captured and taken as a prisoner. So, this has uh, put Zulbi Khan in a, in a quite difficult situation, uh, as the surrounding population was also hostile. Uh, so, he appealed to Aurangzeb for reinforcement, and uh, Aurangzeb has sent, you know, Mughal contingent under uh, Prince uh, Kambaksh and uh, Minister Asad Khan. In fact, Asad Khan was father of Zulfikar Khan. Uh, he was a uh, wazir uh, of Aurangzeb, a very, very important noble, and he used forces under Asad Khan uh, as well as Prince Khan Kambaksh. Uh, they, they went uh, to Jinji to assist Zulfikar Khan in the siege of Zinji. Uh, but this has complicated the situation because uh, the Zulfikar Khan and Asad Khan, uh, Asad Khan uh, they, they somehow thought that Kam Baksh is not very sincere in, in, in his task. He is negotiating with the Marathas. So, you know, the situation became very complicated. There are certain indicators which point out that it was Zulbikar Khan who was in alliance with the Rajaram Marathas. And, but this Asad Khan and Zulbikar Khan, they accuse that Kam Baksh is uh, in league with the Marathas. And this Kam Baksh was uh, put uh, under arrest in December 1692. Now, Kambakshi was under arrest and then there was also rumor of, uh, you know, rumor of death of emperor. Aurangzeb has died. That is a rumor that, that spread in the Mughal forces in the Deccan. Now, this has further demoralized Zulpikar Khan and the Mughal army and they were constantly harassed by the Maratha forces from outside. So, you know, uh, when uh, the, 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 this was all happening, Zulpikar condition became uh, very precarious and then he sent his uh, person uh, to talk to Rajaram and to the Marathas at Jinji. And uh, Rajaram, he allows uh, Zulpikar Khan uh, to withdraw to Gandhi Boys. You see now, Rajaram was supposed to be a person who is attacked from outside, but he is allowing Zulpikar Khan to, to you know, withdraw and stopping Marathas from attacking him. Now, you know, what happened is, at Santaji, he had showed an exceptional bravery, bravery, caught Ali Mardan Khan, defeated him and taken him to Zinji. But Rajaram allows Ali Mardan Khan to go after paying some money and also allows Zulfikar Khan and uh, Asad Khan to withdraw to Vandi Wash when his condition was, be, uh, was, was, was pretty bad in front of the uh, This angers Santaji and you know, he, he says, Ki, why, why are you doing this? Uh, you could have got better bargain. Uh, you must have hold on to these people. You must have also attacked Zulfikar Khan, Asad Khan and Kambaksh and they could have been also caught. So, if the prince, Mughal prince Aurangzeb son himself he becomes prisoner of the Marathas, we will have a better bargaining power. It is quite possible that, uh, you know, Aurangzeb will agree to have a final peace agreement with the Marathas. He may just leave the Marathas uh, as, as, as they want to rule themselves. Um, so, that there was a lot of disagreement between Santaji and uh, Chhatrapati Rajaram. Uh, and, uh, you know, Santaji being a short-tempered person, this has upset him. He was a big emotional kind of person. And, and then he draws uh, to a certain distance from Jinji with his troops. But you know, Rajaram, um, uh, even though he was a uh, king, he understood how important it is to keep the Marathas together. Uh, he puts his ego aside, goes himself uh, to meet Santaji and uh, pacifies him. You know, and uh, you know, during this uh, heated exchange of words, Santaji also accused that this, your ministers are, are corrupt. They, are, they, are, they have taken a lot of money from Mughal and they have convinced you that you should have peace with the Mughal and allow Zulfikar Khan. You know, uh, there is a kind of uh, tussle between the person who sits in the office uh, and, uh, you know, gives advice to the king and the person who actually goes and fights the war. Uh, the people who fights the war, they always mistrust the people who are, you know, sitting with the king and uh, having a discussion and gossiping and policy making. Uh, they, they believe that these people, we are taking the risk of our life, fighting the war, showing a bravery, and these people are just sitting in the capital and, you know, enjoying the privileges of our efforts, and uh, they, they don't really go and risk their life. So, there was that, that kind of pressure also, we, and there is a caste angle also, Santaji and all those uh, people who were fighting during those period, most of them were Marathas, who, who were, who, which is a warrior caste. And the advisors and the ministers, generally those, those offices like, you know, writing and all, those were generally monopolized by the Brahmins. 
so you know santa ji accused that this this really brahmin is is just sitting there and you know being cut up uh, taking money and uh, giving you false advices so nevertheless that heated exchange has taken place but you know this time at least uh, rajaram has uh, managed uh, to pacify santa ji and and the things went ahead well uh this i have already told you there, there is a possibility of secret arrangement between rajaram and zulfikar khan as i have already told you withdrawal of uh, zulfikar khan from andiwash even though the mughals were in a difficult situation seems to uh, it does indicate that probably there was certain understanding you know and it, it is believed that by some of the historian that uh, zulfikar khan and his father asad khan uh, they were probably waiting for uh, the death of aurangzeb everybody now believed that you know there was already rumor of the death of aurangzeb um and uh, during this time uh, they, this is this is the period of 1693-94 around and uh, aurangzeb was quite old during that time and uh, people now believe that probably he is going to die very soon and uh, now what will happen after the death uh, that, that was not certain you know we, uh, the situation during those period was not like today where we have constitution and uh, the death of the top leader it doesn't really make much difference uh, somebody else can al- always replace him everybody has to follow the constitution but that was not the case during the medieval period lot of thing depended on the will of uh, the king and if the king dies uh, probably there was a likelihood of all the administrative structure collapsing and the people always think about their own interest so asad khan and zulfikar khan they were thinking that in case uh, aurangzeb dies we can have you know our own independent kingdom in the south because who is going to succeed aurangzeb was not sure because mughal always had a tradition that he, after the death of the emperor his sons they fight among themselves uh, for the throne and whoever comes out successfully they he usually murders all other uh, you know claimant for the throne uh jahangir uh, succeeded uh, you know akbar because he was the only son alive but uh, when jahangir became weak uh, all his sons they fought among themselves similarly shah jahan you know shah jahan comes out successfully prince kurram who becomes shah jahan when shah jahan becomes uh, you know sick uh, all his sons they fight among themselves and aurangzeb comes out successfully and we see that after the death of aurangzeb uh, this, this 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 pattern is repeated so now uh, all, all this nobility they were thinking what what will be the my advantage and they were uh, thinking about their planning for their own future so asad uh, this zulfikar khan also thought that uh, once aurangzeb dies i can have my own independent kingdom in, in south and he uh, seems to have a kind of secret arrangement with rajaram uh, that uh, the area of golconda you know golconda where now the mughal forces were concentrated to press on uh, jinji uh, golconda area will go to zulfikar khan and the area of bijapur bijapur is now you know already uh, conquered by aurangzeb bijapur territory bijapur territory has now become part of mughal empire and that bijapur territory will be given to rajaram uh, apart from his own uh, kingdom of shivaji in maharashtra so th- there was a possibility of this agreement and uh, that is the reason you know the jinji was not conquered probably and uh, before the conquest of jinji zulfikar khan allowed rajaram to escape along with his wife well now uh, uh, we will go back uh, go back little you know as as zulfikar khan withdraws uh, to andiwash his condition mughal condition becomes uh, precarious he of course withdraws with with prince kambaksh uh, and his father asad khan and before that he had already uh, sent a request to aurangzeb uh, to send a reinforcement now you know uh, aurangzeb he sends a person called qasim khan uh, with a, a huge army uh and his task was to prevent santa ji and dhana ji uh, from attacking zulfikar khan uh, again zulfikar khan was uh, you know kind of uh, kept confined at, at mandiwash uh, and he was protecting himself with a huge army but he feared that if the large number of maratha forces comes to south again from maharashtra my condition will become precarious so in order to safeguard him in, uh, to prevent uh, santa ji and dhana ji Uh, to attacking zulfikar khan qasim khan was sent he was a very capable uh, commander uh, but he was uh, addicted to opium and that, that will see uh, how that addiction became a cause of his his death later on and uh, at the same time uh, qasim khan was sent and aurangzeb also sent a, a letter to zulfikar khan that you must organize your forces and press on the siege of jinji attack uh, jinji and capture jinji fort as well as capture raja ram Uh, now uh, when all this event was taking place uh, dashara you know maratha they had a tradition that every dashara they will have the meeting of commanders and during that dashara meeting it will be decided in which direction uh, the maratha forces will go now 
or what will be the responsibility given uh, that will be given to the different maratha commanders so in the ramchandra banta amatya who was looking after the maratha kingdom in maharashtra from his uh, station at vishalgarh he calls meeting of all the maratha noble in the dashara of 1695 and uh, in, in that meeting uh, it was decided that the there are two fronts uh, where uh, the marathas are should fight now and it is very important that we must save chhatrapati now when chhatrapati sambhaji was captured and killed by aurangzeb if another chhatrapati rajaram is also captured then probably the condition of the marathas will, will become you know uh they the uh, marathas will be demoralized so uh, they 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 gave priority to that and you know uh, so they divided the maratha forces into the two parts uh the first part uh they they will be stationed somewhere near maharashtra and bijapur area and their task was to attack uh, the mughal territories and as well as uh, to protect the fort and the second uh, part of the maratha forces that will go to tungabhadra region you know tungabhadra region is a jindi and surrounding area and their task was uh, to overcome qasim khan qasim khan who is now sent by, with a huge force uh, by aurangzeb uh, from maharashtra to jindi uh, he should be prevented by this second uh, second uh, second contingent of the marathas and uh, that will lead to the re- releasing of the pressure on jindi and rajaram you know jindi and rajaram they were hard faced uh, mughals Uh, were going and increasing in strength so the 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 pressure on them should be reduced so that was the task given uh, to the second um, uh, troop and santaji took up the responsibility of uh, the second troop you know he said ki okay i i will go with this forces uh, to tungabhadra region and uh, i will i will prevent qasim khan from uh, uh, supporting zulfikar khan and jointly attacking jinji and rajaram and dhanaji uh, he remain in the bijapur region you know bijapur region is somewhere in between maharashtra on the one side and tungabhadra region on the one side so depending on the situation dhanaji can act you know he can attack the maratha territory uh, mughal territory you know as as bijapur territory are now part of the mughal empire so he can attack the mughal territory at the same time in case the situation become precarious situation become bad for santaji he can go and help santaji in, in south in tungabhadra region so with that plan one huge army under the command of dhanaji was stationed in the bijapur region and one army of marathas they went towards south uh, to prevent qasim khan from joining joining hands with zulfikar khan uh, well now you know both the sides they were taking uh, information about uh, the activities you know uh, the, the, that is an important part of the warfare so emperor was uh, having his camp at brahm place called brahmapuri that is near pandarpur and uh, as as he came to know that uh, santaji santaji was having a very good reputation as a very brave and capable maratha general you, you know if you remember in the last class i told you that how he attacked with his forces uh, the the camp of uh, mughal emperor and uh, he cut down the ropes of his tent and even managed uh, to Uh, cut the golden cupola and uh, took it to rajaram uh, well so you know uh, he he sent uh, an army under the command of himmat khan uh, to prevent santaji from uh, attacking qasim khan so that qasim khan can go join hands with dilpikar khan and both them both of them can put pressure on jinji now you know qasim khan uh, from one side he was going uh, and himmat khan from the uh, other side You, he also started uh, with his huge, huge forces so both of them tried to have a kind of pincer movement you know that that, that is one of the battle tactics pincer movement is what if you have a forces enemy forces you try to uh, um, uh, you know uh, press upon them from both the sides so you know they they can uh, they will be confined to one place and then you can attack from both the side and uh, destroy your enemy that is called pincer movement So, you know they they tried to have a kind of pincer movement against santaji qasim khan uh, in one from one direction and himmat khan from an, another direction now when dhanaji got information about uh, this condition that uh, you know two army huge army from both the side are trying to confine santaji and attack uh, he immediately started uh, towards karnataka to assist santaji uh, and to, to relieve the pressure on him so you know you you see lot of uh, military movement uh, that that took place between, uh, d- during this time now emperor he, when he came to know that santaji is already good general dhanaji is also very reputed general and i sent qasim khan and you know uh, himmat khan now if they both are engaged with santaji and dhanaji comes and attack them probably marathas will have an upper hand so you know what what, what he does is qasim um, khan has already informed emperor about the situation about the march of santaji and dhanaji 
and uh, situation became uneasy for the mughal so you know what aurangzeb has done he sends he dispatches another person khan azad khan and he was a quite young enthusiastic and aurangzeb trusted him a lot he has shown uh, bravery in in the different battles so uh, and you know uh, aurangzeb now uh, he sends his selected troop of bodyguard you know the emperor's bodyguard they were exceptionally skilled and selected people uh, and uh, very expert in the in the warfare so the select troop of uh, aurangzeb himself uh, under the command of khan azad khan was was sent to sent to south now you know now he was very confident i i, I already have three important uh, three four important and that you know there is a, a zulfikar khan there is a asad khan kambakshi is already there in the south uh, and uh, now i am i have already sent kasim khan himmat khan uh, kasim khan was very experienced person and uh, the young enthusiastic khan azad khan uh, i am sending now with my selected troop so now the situation will be definitely in in favor of uh, the mughal uh, that uh, the emperor became uh, quite confident now you know when kasim khan uh, came to uh, know that khan azad khan a very important noble who is having lot of weightage in in the in the mughal court is is coming for his help uh, he thought you know i should arrange a grand welcome for khan azad khan so he arranges a uh, you know huge tent and furniture and dining set all all that was brought from a place called adoni and near to adoni he organizes this grand welcome for uh, khan azad khan Uh, but you know the naik of chitra uh, chitradurg uh, that is one of the palegar uh, uh, palegar ruler uh, he had uh, you know he was hard pressed by kasim khan kasim khan had done some injustice to him attacking his area and so on and so forth or imposing more taxes mm, so uh, this person he was having some grudge against kasim khan and uh, what he does is he gives information he sent his person uh, to santaji and uh, the information is given where the camp is which are the weak area from where uh, you can attack and uh, what are the places the mughal army is stationed and santaji was a person definitely who is uh, not going to lose an opportunity so what santaji does is now this is a very important battle that is fought by santaji santaji divides his you know huge army into the three parties and uh, before kasim khan and khan azad khan Uh, they reaches to that place where they are supposed to meet and where the grand welcome was arranged early in the morning uh, before uh, you know the before the sunrise uh, he uh, one one troop you know the, remember this he doesn't go there with all his troops there are two uh, uh, the troops uh, two group of troops two contingent which are stationed at, at a specific distance but santaji with one troop they he goes and attack uh, that uh, that camp where the welcome is supposed to take be supposed to take place and that camp is burned and and looted by santaji now when kasim khan um, came to know he got news he leaves his camp with his army and he he attacks santaji's forces at the same time khan azad khan who was also marching to that place you know station at certain distance when he came to know about it he also arranges his army and starts uh, towards uh, santaji and attacks him now they thought that probably santaji has attacked uh, this this camp at adoni with with the full force uh, but they were mistaken as they both forces attack santaji the reserve forces two contingent that were kept separately by santaji they were resting till this time now this this uh, kasim khan and khan azad khan forces they have already traveled certain distance they were already tired but these forces of santaji who were resting and who were very close they suddenly comes out from their hiding and attacks attacks the mughal so you know from one side santaji uh, the khan azad khan and the kasim khan army was both the army were caught, caught in between and the maratha troops with the contingent they start attacking now so you know these mughal they were caught between these these two uh, maratha forces from both the side and their condition became uh, pretty bad they were not prepared for such a huge attack now you know as uh, this this fighting was 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 going on uh, near to uh, that that place of fighting near to adoni there was a small fort small citadel at danderi and this citadel uh, was not enough to to give protection to such a huge mughal army so what this khan does in in order to uh, save their life they leave their army in the open and uh, uh, through the rope they sail into the fort they get into the fort in order to save their life uh, and then santaji uh, he surrounds uh, the the fort uh, and uh, that small fort did not had enough food or water 
and uh, santaji now knew that uh, his enemy is now surrounded and he they, they will be definitely forced to surrender there is no hurry to to rush into the citadel and and catch them that will unnecessarily lead to the loss of wife, uh, life from uh, both side from maratha side as well so you know uh, he surrounds the fort and uh, uh, how long people can survive without food and without water so 3 days it go, goes and their condition becomes pretty bad qasim khan Kasim Khan was addicted to opium, and uh, as he was surrounded, he was not getting his opium. Uh, he dies on twenty uh, November sixteen hundred and ninety five. So uh, you know, it is believed that some historian write that uh, he died because he could not get his dose of opium that he was addicted to, and some historian says that he swallowed poison because you know he was defeated. he was sent with lot of hope by the emperor and his condition became pretty bad so he was not willing to show his face to emperor aurangzeb once again and he consumes poison now uh, in 3 days as the condition of the mughal forces uh, became uh, pretty bad khan azad khan finally sends his uh, representative to santaji and he says ki okay i am i willing to surrender and the negotiation uh, took place santaji uh, uh, says that okay finally you have to pay me 20 lakh rupees as well as you have to leave all your baggage here and i, I ensure that you will be safely um, uh, sent to emperor aurangzeb and uh, you know 20 lakh was paid uh, to santaji as well as uh, 30 lakh the baggage cost was around 30 lakh so uh, all that was captured by santaji but you know santaji he maintain a very iron discipline in his army so as this mughal i mean khan azad khan and his surviving troop as they surrender Uh, they marched to marathas but no maratha uh, soldier had a uh, courage or or uh, Im, uh, you know imprudence um, or audacity to disobey santaji's command and try to molest uh, this this mughal soldier or try to snatch something from them and uh, through the maratha army even santaji you know true to his word he sent his own escort uh, so that this khan azad khan can be safely uh, taken uh, to aurangzeb's camp so this was a very, very important victory because you know see uh, these two important uh, mughal general uh, qasim khan and khan azad khan uh, they they were uh, brought to their knees uh, by santaji's tactics and santaji's uh, guerrilla warfare that is the reason he is known as a master of the guerrilla warfare uh, you know uh, i wish he should have uh, he should had a capacity Uh, to control his temper and to control his ego probably he could have proved uh, much more service uh, to the maratha cause uh, but you know you cannot change the history you have to understand and study as as the things have happened so we'll, we'll, we'll go now further up to here is there any doubt uh, any doubt you have about uh, the things that we have discussed this battle up at adoni uh, and uh, you know uh, what was the name of the fort no sir uh that is uh, the battle at danderi yeah battle at danderi is, is very important where qasim khan dies and khan azad khan uh, surrenders no sir no doubt <laughs> well okay, we go ahead now so you know uh, th- there was an another mughal commander uh, named himmat khan in the south and when he came to know all this precarious situation of uh, Qasim Khan and Khan Azad Khan. He also attacked Santaji, but uh, Santaji was more than a match for him, and the Marathas were quite stronger at this at at this position. And Himmat Khan uh, uh, and his son, they both were killed in the battle. Uh, and after that, uh, you know, the news reaches uh, Aurangzeb, and Aurangzeb sends now another general, Hamiduddin Khan, with with a fresh troop. and uh, now you know santaji's army was tired now constantly fighting uh, rushing burning the camp then constantly fighting against qasim khan and then khan azad khan and then uh, you know all that negotiation of surrender but this uh, this troop which uh, recently came uh, from the mughal camp was quite fresh and uh, they managed to defeat uh, santaji but santaji was a person who was not interested in losing his 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 men so when you see that situation is is uh, becoming bitter for him not good for him uh, he withdraws from the war and you know the mughal claim that uh, that, that is a victory uh, so hamiduddin khan nevertheless uh, he managed to defeat santaji and santaji withdraws and uh, but you know uh, these earlier victories of qasim khan and khan azad khan and uh, uh, 
killing of uh, himmat khan and his son uh, by santaji that is held as a great victory among the marathas that has increased the courage of the marathas and it, it has depressed uh, the mughal it, it has created fear among among the mughal now you know santaji uh, this two victory has further boosted santaji's ego he was already a person who did not know how, how to control his tongue uh so uh, he lacked that diplomacy and restraint uh and uh, you know we have correspondence between santaji and ramchandra pant amatya when ramchandra pant amatya constantly reminding santaji that you must uh, control your temper you must control your anger and you must show respect to chhatrapati rajaram uh, don't don't be very harsh to the people who are working under you don't don't, don't be very cruel giving uh, punishment you know and kafi khan writes about santaji that Santaji was uh, such a strict disciplinarian that uh, for certain mistakes he used to have the people trampled under the feet of the elephants. So you know, uh, now uh, earlier also uh, when Santaji uh, when when Raja Ram allowed Jhulpikar Khan to withdraw to Vandi Wash, uh, he had a certain disagreement with Santaji, uh, and there were some heated exchange of the word. However, Raja Ram managed to pacify Santaji during that time. but after that also the kind of communication and the kind of discussion that santaji and rajaram was having the differences went on increasing uh, and uh, santaji's behavior uh, had you know disgusted many maratha nobles as well as as rajaram and now after this victory you know his ego was uh, quite puffed up uh, so he goes uh, straight to jinji mm, have meeting with rajaram and he demands the reward for for his action reward for his bravery and uh, during that meeting a serious uh, altercation takes place between rajaram and santaji and uh, Ra- santaji he accuses rajaram that you lack courage you are the person who is sitting in the court of jinji with your wives and enjoying your your life and i am the person who is fighting and defeating the mughal and I, then he 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 utters a sentence uh, that was too much for rajaram to bear santaji says that i can make an unmake chhatrapati uh i uh, you know i can make anybody chhatrapati i am i am so such a brave person and this was too much for uh, a decent person uh, you know rajaram was not a person who was given to anger he tried to pacify santaji earlier uh, but this was too much for santa for rajaram to take and santaji now he was dismissed from the office of senapati santaji was holding the position of senapati and dhanaji was appointed at at his place uh, now santaji withdraws from jinji you know he goes at at, at certain place and uh, dhanaji was uh, sent against him uh, with, with the army now see the, the condition has has become uh, pretty unusual santaji and dhanaji who jointly defeated the mughal but now santaji and dhanaji are fighting against each other uh, because santaji has antagonized rajaram um, and he withdraws uh, from jinji and now the battle was fought between santaji and dhanaji and in that first battle 1696 june Uh, dhanaji was defeated and uh, one of the supporter of dhanaji uh, amrutrao nimbalkar he was caught by santaji and he was taken as a prisoner and later on you know santaji as i told you he was a person who had had this traces of cruelty he tramples this person amrutrao nimbalkar under the feet of elephant amrutrao nimbalkar is killed now and you know this, this has antagonized many marathas uh, and uh, amrutrao nimbalkar's uh, sister uh, she was married to a person called nagoji mane another maratha noble uh, who was his place was uh, masward near satara so this nagoji mane was negotiating whether i should go and serve under aurangzeb or whether i should go and serve under raja rab he was already in the in the service of aurangzeb and aurangzeb he considered santaji as his mortal enemy because it was santaji who attacked mughal camp cut the rope of uh, aurangzeb's tent uh, and aurangzeb has already announced uh, the reward on the head of santaji anybody who will bring the head of santaji will be richly rewarded and you know this amrutrao sister who was married to nagoji mane she now pressed on her husband take revenge of the killing of my brother and nagoji mane he was constantly keeping watch on the movement of santaji he came to know about the uh, the rupture uh, of the relationship between santa relation between santaji and rajaram and santaji's dismissal from the post of commander in chief and uh, uh, dhanaji uh, and and santaji uh, their war and all that information he was keeping a trap of it a track of it now what happened is uh, because of this uh, uh, dhanaji uh, and rajaram they were also communicating with the people who were working under under santaji 
so here what happen is some of the people who were working under santaji they were angered with by the punishment that is given to amrit ram embalgar they were also unhappy with uh, the kind of uh, temper that santaji have you know very strict disciplinary or very angry person and you know uh, uh, having addresses of humility similarly they were quite uh, unhappy with santaji's behavior with chhatrapati you know chhatrapati is after all a king and you you need to respect he is the son of shivaji who is almost treated like a god among the among the maharashtrian uh so many of santaji's troops they left him and and they they joined dhanaji now dhanaji's forces became quite strong santaji's forces they they become leaner and leaner they were becoming uh, you know um, uh, the, many of them leaving santaji they were becoming leaner and leaner over, uh, over a day and uh, now raja ram orders dhanaji that you must capture santaji and uh, near bijapur now uh, another battle was fought as as santaji's army became thin santaji now flees from karnataka towards maharashtra uh, but near bijapur uh, the there the exchange took place dhanaji was chasing him and uh, in that battle in uh, which was fought in march 1697 just re- remember june 96 uh, santaji defeated dhanaji but in march by march the table were turned in this 5 6 month uh, santaji was severely defeated by dhanaji Uh, and after the defeat also a large number of santajis followed they joined with dhanaji and now santaji with his selected uh, very loyal troops uh, servants he took shelter in the mahadev hills that is near satara and uh, nagoji mane as i have already told you he was keeping a track of uh, santaji's movement and uh, in that mahadev hill uh, in june 1697 see that battle was, took place in march where santaji was defeated Two three months he was just moving in the forest, a kind of homeless person. Now you see, Santaji's position became pretty bad because he was a patriot to the core, patriot dedicated to the cause of the Marathas. So you know he could never think about joining hands with Aurangzeb and turning against the Marathas. But he could not put up uh, address with with the Raja Ram. You know, so the, we can learn a lot of lessons from history. That even though you are a very capable person, you must keep your anger in control and try to address with the situation. Otherwise, you may Prove a kind of troublesome not only to other but you may create trouble for your own life and that is what happened with Santaji. So you know as he was moving in that uh, Mahadev hills near Satara uh, like a wanderer with a, with a very small few follower, uh, he was taking bath in a river and suddenly uh, he was attacked uh, by the people uh, that was probably sent by Nagoji Mane. and uh, without without he, you know before he could uh, prepare himself for the war his head was cut off and that head was given to nagoji mane and nagoji mane with that santaji's head goes to brahmapuri uh, and meet aurangzeb and that head was presented to aurangzeb and uh, by seeing that uh, aurangzeb was very happy that one of his mortal enemy of the mughal is no more and nagoji was richly uh, rewarded by Uh, so that, that was that was a tragic end of Santaji, and but Santaji's uh, career uh, um, uh, career it, it forms an important part of Maratha War of Independence under the um, Raja Ram's uh, under Raja Ram. So this this has given uh, quite a blow to Marathas. Uh, he was a master of the guerrilla warfare. But uh, one one interesting thing is that Santaji's brothers, you know, Santaji's uh, I have already referred to his two brothers who were given. Title by Raja Ram. These two brothers they cooperated with Dhanaji later on also. They 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 did not keep this in mind that Santaji was you know this was from his job. Dhanaji fought war against Santaji. Uh, he they probably understood that it was his brother. Uh, it was their brother uh, because of his short tempered uh, that that led to his downfall. And they cooperated with Dhanaji and they fought against Mughal. Even even Santaji's son also later on uh, fought uh, under under Tara Bai for against against Mughal. uh now uh, as uh, santaji is uh, after santaji is tragic end i am not in a mood to go ahead that makes me sad as well so i am going to stop here all right and uh, further this discussion uh, about the maratha war of independence and raja ram uh, we will continue la- in the next class uh, is there any doubt you have tell me no sir okay so i I'll, i'll just uh, take your attendance No sir. There is a Marathi movie. If you can understand that Marathi movie, uh, understand Marathi. It is there on YouTube. Dhanate uh, Santaji Dhanaji. We can.
can just uh, directly take a look at that. What is date today? Today is 22? 22nd, yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Alia, uh, this will be Shalini is there. Shalini is not there. This will be there today. Lalin, who is this one? Meenal is not there. If I go up there, Swati is not there. Then Sopnil is also not there. Profil is there, I think. Yes. Asya is there. Puja is there. I saw Puja. Puja is there, okay. Sneha is not there again. Yes. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye.